Electronic Music Podcast. All right, here we are. Voice of Electronic Music, episode number 64, with Albert Gruber. Uh, he goes by Albert, and uh, he works for uh, Sequence. He's a co-founder of Sequence, uh, which is a, uh, a music tagging software, correct? Correct. Well, well, kind of correct, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Almost. It's, a, it's like music music recognition uh, tool and, and platform. Um, we started... A couple of years ago, a couple yeah years ago, uh, with some friends, you know, discussing what we could create with with uh, music music recognition, and to do to to give musicians a tool or DJs producers to get their music uh, better distributed or like better known out there. Mm -hmm. And um, at the first part, we started like with uh, with a, with an app. So a DJ, for example, if you play a gig in, in San Francisco and you play one of my tracks and you have the app running, it's listening, detects my track, I will get an instant notification that you're playing my track at Halcyon at, in uh, San Francisco, for example. It's so cool. So it's, it's yeah, it's, it's um, that was that was actually the basic idea of it, you know, to because I had the the, the thing that Richie Horton played a track on mine, I found out like six months later, which is, doesn't really help me on the promo anymore, you know? <laughs> I can't go like, oh yeah, but by the way, I had this track like eight right. months ago, and Horton played it. Yeah, right. Buy it now, yeah. it's old, but buy it, you know? It's like... <laughs> kind so, of pa yeah, that, pa that, past its usefulness at that point, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I always wondered why nobody had the idea to do it. I mean, there was people doing it, like Richie Horton himself did it, but it's mm -hmm. just for his for his uh, laptop and for his uh, gigs when he plays live. And he, he streams those uh, plays on, on Twitter live. But oh, interesting. The, like every other gig. So, and there's no tagging or anything happening, so you have to search for your own name and... It's like a little bit huh. complicated. So. so he had his own kind of software set up for exactly that. Except, kind of. I mean, he he. I mean, he plays mainly through Tractor, mm -hmm. and uh, he had some script uh, written. I think I'm not 100 percent sure how it works, but it's like inside his computer. Basically, it reads what he's playing, the file, and then it, it creates a post on Twitter saying like I'm playing this and that track. But uh, you don't get any notification for the other artist or, or any. It, it's, you have to really type in your name and, and be lucky to find it. You know, it's like right. a little bit like on 2001 track lists, for example. So it, yeah, so it's just it's just letting his fans see his track list, whereas exactly. uh, sequence is show is is notifying people when their stuff has been played. Exactly. I mean, uh, of course, you have to have the app. But uh, I mean, we we also find ways through Facebook, for example. We find out instantly who is uh, which which Facebook account is connected to the artist, so we can we, we can do postings and tag the people and, and and make them and show them that their tracks are being played, so they wow. hopefully download the app. It's so cool. Yeah, and I, I had a chance to uh, to experience it. Uh, we did a. Uh, a live stream for Fierce Animals with uh, my buddy Ryan Michael Robbins, who int introduced me to you. And um, they were doing a, a takeover at Halcyon, uh, where we streamed for, you know, I think it was four or six hours. I think it was probably six hours. And we had yeah. your uh, the sequence um, app, I guess, or a, or a script running in the... It's Exactly, that was like a live widget, widget. Like, which is still a better, better version, and uh, we, we're still working on that one. Uh, for the moment, because of all the COVID thing, of course, we had to change. We were all focused on the live part, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, when it, when the whole life, life world broke down, basically, uh, <laughs> we, we had to change and concentrate and figure out a new model of what we're going to do, and then we started to to concentrate on those all those streams that are happening there. Yeah. So we first of all we started to create live track lists with the live track IDs. Mm -hmm. And then we said, okay, we're gonna create the, that widget widget that you could put like right in your video wherever you want it, you know, and you have your artist or the club name or the event name and it will show uh, people which track is playing right now. Mm hmm Yeah, it worked surprisingly and well. Yeah, we were we were happy <laughs> that it worked. I mean, it's always not. It's it's always a bit. It depends on. Uh, I talked to Ryan before because, like, 
some people tend to play a lot of like promotion stuff or, mm. or even uh, not, not even release stuff uh, yeah. that is not out there at all. And of course, we cannot recognize that because it's, if it's not out there, we don't know it yet. Yeah. Uh, there will be solutions later as an artist, for example, they go online on your platform or like on, the, on our platform in your profile and you upload tracks already when, mm. you're, when you're done for the first time. So the, the, the software will recognize it and you can already show the world that you're playing your tracks. Ah. Uh, when they're unreleased or whatever, you know, so sure. um, that that should be quicker because, like, uh, for example, other other companies, it's like their tracks have to be like uh, um, Shazam. I was about to say <laughs> uh, they have to be uh, uh, searched like fifty times or more. So if there's not a, that much popular song, you, it will take uh, it will take some time until uh, the platform hmm. will know it. Interesting. So we will to help the smaller artists as well to, to get their place, uh, get their tracks known. So, with, with, uh, so you're, are you saying that with something like Shazam, uh, a track has to be uh, Shazammed like 50 times or some, some number of times before it kind of gets put into an official database? Something like that. I mean, I, I'm not 100% I'm not sure how their numbers. It's like there's numbers floating around the web, you know, so it's mm. like you, you never know exactly what's happening. Yeah. But uh, if... if there, there was the numbers out there that it has to be been searched for 50 to 100 times and then for example Shazam starts looking after that song he's like uh, what is it you know where is it from yeah. uh, if it's popular songs uh, sometimes for us we find tracks I mean we, we, we don't work with Shazam it's a different different it's a little bit of a different system mm -hmm. but um, we sometimes you find out tracks that are still in promo phase they're not out there yet mm. but they've, they've been played already that much out there that uh, the the softwares know it, you know. So um, sure. it's building up, and those databases are getting better and bigger. Yeah. Um, also, all the labels know nowadays that it's good to be uploaded there on those platforms because you get a wider audience and you get known to the, to DJs and to to fans as well. Mm. Um, yeah. I I, 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 yeah, I feel like I've I've noticed that uh, when I'm sh so I was in the car the other day and I don't listen to a lot of um, a lot of radio but for whatever reason I I, th I think my phone was off because it, it it died or something so I always put the radio on so I put the radio on and there was a track that I actually liked and I was like oh this is cool and I I shazammed it and I, I want to say within half a second it knew exactly what song it was. And so I, yeah. want, I wonder if maybe for some reason, because of the popularity of it, it's like it recognizes it faster. Because, you know, when I do electronic music songs, um, it, uh, it, 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 I can find them for the most part, but uh, it seems to take a little bit longer. And, you know, that might also yeah. have to do with the fact that um, a lot of electronic music songs, I mean, if you, you tag the wrong part uh, or the right part of uh, like a house music song, I mean, that could sound like, like, 10,000 other house music tracks except for this one little blip that's very unique to, to that track you know of course the rest of the track has has more going on but in certain yeah. stretches of these songs they just sound very kind of like typical that's uh, that's the thing I mean that's the basic idea of that whole fingerprinting technology I mean that's the basic thing uh, most platforms work with um, it, it takes out bits and pieces of the track in various uh, frequency ranges and they start to listen to it and like a fingerprint they, they and then pretty much every song has a unique finger, fingerprint right. uh, I mean you will always have problems for example with some vocal samples if you hear the 500 version of show me love uh, and you have, <laughs> the, have the lyric in there it, it, it might find different versions of it you know so that's yeah. always a, a bit of a problem but uh, it's like with electronic music, sometimes, especially with live gigs, you might run into the problems of different pitches, you know, because you mm. play at a faster or slower speed or you, you pitch the track in, in tonality. And that, of course, doesn't help really the, the, the fingerprinting detection. But we're getting better at that as well um, to, to being able to recognize that. Same as with mashups, for example, in the more commercial areas, like if you go into EDM or stuff like that, uh, they do, they play a lot of like mashups, you know, where they mix like two or three tracks into each other. So that's, that's some challenges we have to, we have to fight, but we're getting there.
Sure. Yeah. So I mean, it, so it sounds like from what you're saying that you can you can also with some of these programs and and maybe maybe yours uh, now or eventually you can upload your stuff and then the software kind of has to learn a little bit less or 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 figure out less. Exactly. Is the is the learn is the learning side of things is that is that like artificial intelligence is that AI or, or what how does it do that? Um, on the on the fingerprinting side, it's it's pretty much straightforward. I mean, the more the more information they get through through detection, but the more people detect place, the better it gets and and, and finds out the, the the random rooms or, or locations you're in, on, and and it gets better at that. Uh, what we do in, in in our part is also like getting some uh, um, AI into the whole system. To find out, it's like that. It, for example, sometimes also it can happen that there is a, a really strange result on a techno DJ, and it comes up like, I don't know, David Guetta, hmm. which is not that. The, and that the AI will figure out. Hang on, it's not really possible that uh, Carl Cox is playing David Guetta at, at, at main stage or whatever. Right. So it will filter out already, and that's that's part of the machine learning processing. Hmm. So you find out. Uh, the, the possibility of uh, what is being played by the different DJs to get, uh, at the end, hopefully 100% right results. Of course, we're missing some still, but, uh, and it's also changing through different styles of music. Sure. Uh, it varies a little bit, um, but we're, we're right there with, I would say, 85 to 95% uh, correct correct results with, wow. uh, with the tracks right now. So um, getting better there, um, yeah. Interesting. This is, you know, I guess maybe not not too much of a side note. It's it's related, but I was thinking about this the other day that, um, you know, I, I've been using Splice for uh, my music, and, and I kind of went yeah. back and forth. I, I liked the idea, and then I was like, you know, oh well, maybe these are being like too overly used, and so I won't do it. And then so I I canceled my subscription, but then I restarted again because uh, because I really I found that. Um, it's so nice to be able to just know that I need something and I can just search it, you know, whereas like yeah. on, on my computer, my hard drive, I can't just search like, you know, um, vocals in the key of A or something, you know, um, and but, but but with Splice, I can. Um, but then it got me thinking, too, like with with, uh, you know, if, if you're using some of these. OK, so my, my buddy actually uh, sent me a, a, an Instagram story or um, Snap or whatever that was him and he found some uh he found a vocal that a big time producer used that was straight up from splice i mean it was literally like he didn't even alter it it was that was the vocal yeah. for the song uh, which we thought was cool but then it got me thinking like what what happens if you know i were to use that track or that 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 sample and you know it's a splice sample but i've used it in my song rightfully right as did the other dj or producer um and so that i feel like might you know i i feel like since he has maybe bigger and 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 released the track before that if i were to upload that onto youtube my song would get flagged as copyright infringement you know so there's this weird issue there with uh, what, do you, what do you think about that why it might get might get flagged might, must not be. I mean, I mean, that doesn't have to be. It's like sure. sometimes because they depends on their their algorithms they use uh, for for the, the the whole track. I mean, if mm. the, the the vocal is that um, uh, significant, then it might happen. But mm. I think normally, even with vocals, especially with samples, it wouldn't have or wouldn't wouldn't happen uh, that often. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the only concern I would have as an artist is that, like, if something happens like this, uh, that I would go like, oh, everybody would think I just wanted to, wanted to copy his track now. <laughs> yeah. That's 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 more of the problem. Even though it's a sample, like one of one of thousand samples out there. Yeah. I mean, it happened to me so many times as well that I produced songs, you know, and use some sample library and use some vocals in there and like three months later you hear another track completely different stuff with the mm. same vocal it's yeah. like oh is it a remix of yours it's like no it's just the same sample yeah. you, know, you just bought the same thing right so that's that's the, that's the downside of samples um yeah. but yeah i think about the about the flagging on, on on youtube i think that wouldn't be that much an issue I mean, we we starting uh, to to work together with some of those platforms because, uh, like you said, now with copyright issues, that's actually a major part where we're going into with sequence now as well, which is actually also our 
or gonna be our our one of our main goals and targets for the future is to work together with the PROs, the public rights organizations. Mm. Like um, I don't know, I don't know what's what's the one you got. Like you got like a couple of them in the US. Oh, we use know, uh, like, uh, BMI and um, ASCAP. BMI, yeah. ASCAP is another exactly, one. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, over here in Europe, it's like from country to, to country, it's di different uh, PROs. Hmm. And uh, normally, as an artist, if you played at a club, you should get money for it. Uh, but you don't at the moment because there's right. no nobody nobody uh, delivers set lists to the to the PROs. Yeah. And that's that was actually a point where we got where we jumped on to was like, well, if you play, if I play a gig here in Berlin in the club. Um, and you don't put in the file in the list. Uh, yeah. In the end, the, the, the big artists that already get millions of euros every or dollars every year, because they are statistically the highest ranked uh, yeah. artists, they will receive the money. And all the smaller artists or underground DJs or whatever, they won't receive a penny of it. You know. Right. So that 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 was actually the target, and we're talking with a lot of PROs already having test runs as well. To get that running for life, because mm. it's it's for the live shows, because um, it's actually quite a lot of money. It's like we, we we calculated that each live play in a club, depending on the size and on the on the, on the entrance fees and stuff, will will be valued about two to to three dollars per play. So if you have a couple of tracks released out there and and, and you have like fifty plays all over the world, um, you earn another hundred and fifty bucks or, or two hundred bucks on a weekend. Just with your music, that's yeah. more than most people sell with their music, you know. Right. So, uh, it's significant. And that will exactly, and that yeah. could happen every night. Or if somebody plays a track of you at Tomorrowland, for example, or one of the big festivals, then your play might be worth six to eight hundred dollars one play. Right. It depends on the on the, on the crowd and, and, and the and size and the scale the, and the and size yeah. exactly. Yeah. So that's actually the big part we're we going into right now. I mean. Right now is nothing. Life is not happening, but the same thing for for streams because like mm. that's what we we were talking about with a lot of uh, partners and and, 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 and and customers already. It's like there's got to be a way of monetizing the streams as well. I mean, yeah. you have the same thing with with, with the streams you're running. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's good to do that, and you do that to 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 keep your reach and to to so people will remember you, you know, and uh, yeah. they come back when everything goes back to normal. But it's all a thing you do uh, from your own heart and, and, and your own work, and yeah. you're not getting a cent out of it. So that's what we want to. We're working on different models. Also, how how you can at least uh, get money for the artists, mm -hmm. but as well on a later stage, also for those people who, who organize those events. Yeah, and uh, it's a major task because. Platforms like Facebook, they don't want to pay. I yeah. mean, that's why they're just shutting down the streams. You know, they, they, and to be honest or to be fair, they, they, they are not a live, plat live music platform. Right. They, they never wanted to be. They always just wanted to be a social platform where you spend millions on on ads, yeah. to, 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 <laughs> but not to to play music and happiness. Sure. <laughs> And um, so there's other platforms like Twitch or Mixcloud or YouTube, which are going to be uh, more interesting. And, and, and we talked with some of them already to find ways that we can we can transmit playlists. So also the tracks are not getting flagged, for example, or, or streams are cut down or uh, shut down. Uh, and in the end, the artists are getting the money out of it. But mm. I think it's a long way to go because it needs a lot of changes as well in, in, in regulations and laws and, and uh, yeah, it's not that easy. Yeah. I, I really do feel like uh, Facebook uh, kind of dropped the ball on on this. I mean, I, I totally get what you mean. They wanted to be a social platform where people w could talk and share their thoughts and uh, mm. know, complain about their day and all that. But, um, you know, uh, when you put a, a, live, a live streaming platform like that, you have to anticipate that you know, people are going to want to play music and, and all exactly. these copyright issues, right? So I, I kind of feel like they should have addressed this before they even got, got started, which, which, which it's, kind of a, it's kind of a thing that tech companies do a lot of times, like, you know, even uh, Lyft and Uber, right? Like they started and they just kind of said, well, we'll just give this app to people and then we'll just figure it out as we go, you know? And, you know, exactly, yeah. in, in, certain, in certain circumstances, I mean, 
or in a certain light, uh, I'm, I'm kind of glad that they did that because I think if they had gone through all of the bureaucratic red tape to get this app off the ground, it probably would have never happened and we wouldn't have Lyft and Uber, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's always a, it's always a balance. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, you know, what I'm really excited about with, with this and what, with what you guys are doing and uh, what Mixcloud is doing is, you know, I'm, I'm picturing in like a, a, a perfect scenario, maybe five or 10 years down the line. And just like you were saying, every person, every person's song that's getting played, right? Because when you, when you make a, a song and, and it, it, goes, it goes to sync licensing for movies and television shows and radio yeah. and that sort of thing, um, you get paid for that. You get paid for that if it gets played in an elevator or a Macy's, you know. <laughs> and so, so there's, you know, what I went to, um, I went to music engineering school, and there was a lot of uh, people there that, uh, you know, did the engineering for an album that went to uh -huh. sync licensing, and even still, they're getting, they're getting yeah. royalty pay uh, paychecks their entire life, as long, you know, basically as long as that that, that music is out there getting paid. And, you know, exactly. so, sometimes it's a, a check for $10. Sometimes it's a check for like, you know, 15 grand um, because it's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's just, it, 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 they, they, it accumulates plays, BMI, ASCAP kind of, you know, uh, holds on to it and then delivers like a, a chunk to you, um, that sort of yeah. thing. Um, but, you know, if this, if you guys can figure this out and we can have this for the 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 music uh music world uh the, the live music world um i, I just I, I think that it would solve a lot of the problems that so many of us have as kind of these starving musicians and starving artists exactly. right because because it's I mean, all the, all this gear costs a lot of money, and God knows we spend hours, hour, day, you know, probably years collectively of our lives making this yeah. stuff that just kind of goes out there into the ether, and then you end up not getting paid for it, unless of course you you sign it to some label, and then that. that but but that's that's not the majority of the world, right? So if you were able to just exactly. you know collect, collect scrape up these three dollars, like you said, a night all over the world get 150 bucks on a weekend that you weren't expecting. I mean, that would make things just way better. Exactly. That's, I mean, that's, that's where we're going at or where we're heading at uh, to, to people who don't want to play every weekend or don't want to play five gigs a week sometimes, you know, to, to, to make a living and to get, get, get straight, you know? So we, we go like uh, those people who are, who are sitting in a studio and, and, and prefer sitting in a studio. I know so many producers around here as well. They actually say, I don't like gigging anymore. I'm like 45 or I'm like 50 or whatever. And I'm, I don't want to be at the club like every weekend, three days and fly yeah. from, from Barcelona to London and to the States and to wherever. Uh, I would rather play like one or two or three good gigs a month and I enjoy them and, and, and earn money with my music that I'm actually with my art that I'm creating. Yes. And um, I think that would, would change a lot, you know, so because if, if those people... That, that produce a lot and produce good music. Their music is played all over the world. And and uh, if you have like, I don't know, a uh, hundred tracks out there or 200 tracks out there on Beatport, the chances are pretty high that you get a couple of hundred plays mm -hmm. around the world every day, uh, especially on the weekends or in the summer every day. But sure. then, then you'll have like a couple of hundred uh, dollars every, every day probably, you know, yeah. added to your account. I mean, we know that at the moment, the, the, there's like we have some numbers from from different organizations. There's like worldwide, uh, two, I think it's 2.1 billion dollars uh, not paid in royalties, only in electronic music because they don't know what's being played out there. Right. So that's a hell of a lot of money for artists, you know. <laughs> right. It's like most people don't even know what a billion is, you know. It's like, <laughs> and 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 the thing is, is like. That's that's actually unfair that those that, that it goes to the wrong people. Yeah, and uh, we want to work on that to, to support our artists. Um, same way around, we get a lot of questions about how how you motivate people who are not producers to use your app, for example. You know, and there's also a solution where we want to go. Okay, if you if you play in a gig and you're not producing yourself, you will get your share, like a small percentage, but you'll get a share. Uh, of all the tracks that have been uh, uh, submitted. Hmm. So in the end, you might get, I don't know, uh, another 50, 50 bucks or something at the end of the night, which sure. helps if you, if you play two or three gigs a week, that's also a little bit more than what you get normally, you know? Yeah. So uh, 
to make the whole thing a bit more fair and, and, and equal, you know, with, with, with the music being produced. Sure. Yeah. I mean, if the uh, sync licensing and movie uh, TV world can figure it out, I don't understand why why we wouldn't be uh, able to figure it out as well, you know? And I, I think that um, that might solve a lot of the, you know, there's so much contention with, um, you know, Spotify and uh, Pandora and these streaming platforms uh, because, you know, people are seeing, even big record labels are seeing a fraction, a small, fr minuscule fraction uh, of return back on their music being played out. You know, and we're talking, you know, what is the, per play, I think you get something like 0. 0.0001 One cent seven, or yeah. something yeah. Uh, per play, right? And so, you know, if people were able to get uh, money from the uh, other people playing their music out, like we're, we're talking about here, um, and get uh, because that to me it seems like there's more there's more money to be shared there. Whereas you know when you talk about Spotify and and Pandora, uh, the, the the big issue that you run into is that to to be able to pay people out kind of properly, assuming that's their only income from music, uh, it would cost each of us you know uh, three hundred dollars a month to be able to listen to Spotify, right? Yeah, uh, maybe exactly. even more than that. Um, but uh, if if they were able to get money from uh, this other, you know, the live side of things where it seems like there's maybe a bigger uh, pie to share, then maybe it wouldn't matter quite so much that, that uh, you know, because because nobody wants to pay more than $10 a month to listen to Spotify. Like That's the thing, and that's yeah. fair enough on the, on the other hand because you can reach people all over the world and you will reach people with your music who never even wanted to hear your music, maybe, you know, but they yeah. will find out, oh, actually, I like it. Right. Um, that's actually the great thing about it, you know. It's like yeah. uh, I've been also in the first – First couple of years of Spotify, I was like, oh, fuck, you know, it was like, still grew up in those days, you know, with, 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 with LPs and, and, and vinyl, vinyl and, and, and CDs. And I have like a collection of a couple of thousand CDs at home and all of that. And, and, and yeah, well, it's it's stored in boxes now because I have it all on mm. Spotify, you know, it's like, <laughs> and it's so much easier to find the right tracks. They just there yeah. for my... Uh, um, uh, like remembrance, you know, the old days. Right. But I mean, nowadays, I think it's it's quite good to discover music, and I think it's just new models that have to be found for for musicians as well, mm. and for labels and, and record companies to to make value out of it. You know, it's it, it, whether if it's not only the the playing, of course, on, on Spotify, but also you know, for example, in the gaming world, the whole esports uh, to get your music out there so people play. Your music in 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 in, in, tra in their in their streams, for example, or uh, for movie, uh, like you said, like movies or third licensing, uh, third party licensing uh, deals. Uh, I think it's 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 way more to do than just selling cop or like just selling records right now. Mm -hmm. And I think if you if 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 we if people do it right, I think we're on a good way at the moment. Also, it has to be it's like we're talking a lot about those streams, you know, monetizing mm -hmm. streams. And I, I always come back to the gamers because I've got some friends who they make a decent living out of that game, oh, yeah. you know, sitting in front of their uh, computer and gaming and chatting. Yeah. And and I I actually started watching those things on Twitch because it, it, it inspired me for some things that might happen for music in the future. Because mm. uh, I think we still live also in that kind of age where we think, oh, a stream has to be worth like five euros, 10 euros, whatever, or dollars. Same like uh, like what you would pay in a club, you know, but yeah. it doesn't work that way, especially not for the kids nowadays. It's, like, yeah. it's all about those micro payments. And uh, mm. that's what we said, for example, with Sequence, if you have that app up there running as an add-on in that case, then already on Twitch, for example, you might have micro payment. If you like that track, uh, first of all, you can straight add it to your Spotify playlist or you can uh, go on Beatport and buy the track but also you can like donate a couple of cents or something or a couple of pennies whatever to to that track because you like it mm. and uh, if, if like for, from one person 10 cents won't be a lot a lot you know yeah. but if there is a hundred or a thousand people because some some streams are really getting big attention are getting that amount of money then you might end up with with good good value in the end, you know. Right. And I think that that is still a, a thing that we have to learn our gen our generation, I say, because like the kids already know it, and they they are the future 
future customers, you know, that we're yeah. working for on, on another hand, you know. So uh, I think there's a lot going to change because of COVID now, the whole COVID and the whole pandemic thing at the moment. I mean, there's so much going on in the world uh, mm. and, and people are thinking about a lot of, and I think people are open for change as well. It's uh, like people saying, I'm sure you heard it as well, people working home office now and they say like, well, actually they're getting a little bit less money and I'm, but I'm only working like 20 or 30 hours a week, right. but I'm having so much more of my life. And actually I found out that I, I can, I can deal with a little less money, mm. but I have more life. I have more family time. I have, I have a garden. I can, everybody planted trees. Every DJ profile I've seen on Facebook is like <laughs> when they started planting planting flowers or whatever, or they started doing sports and everything. And everybody is like, actually, of course it hurts me because I'm losing a lot of money, but I found myself again, you know, and right. I, I'm enjoying that. And I think with all that, it might be time for a good change, you know, for a lot of things to, to not only be in a workhorse all the time and, and we create some structures. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's probably one of the greatest uh, silver linings to the to the the whole quarantine and the the uh, COVID uh, pandemic is you know people. I mean, we're seeing it here in in San Francisco a lot, where uh, just like you said, people are are working from home and they're realizing, hey, I can get my my the same amount of work done. Sometimes even maybe more. You might be more productive at home because you're happier. You're not as stressed out. Yeah. You didn't just commute. You don't have an hour commute to and from work. Right. And so, and, and every, I mean, it's, you know, it's easy to say, well, it's just a commute, you know, we can deal with it, but, but not really, because when you're, when you're, you know, especially it's a very American thing as well uh, to, you know, uh, it's this weird thing where nobody wants to be the first one out of the office, right? Like, it's almost like a, some sort of weird um, game that people play that, you know, the, the longer yeah. you're there, the more serious you are and the more money you should make. And it just seems so silly because I've always been of the mindset, like, no, you get your work done. You, you, you uh, efficiency, right? Efficiency exactly. is, is, is probably the most valuable thing because we yeah. all, we all have the same 24 hours in any given day. Right. And so, you know, if you're able to get, you know, boom, you have no commute. There, there's two hours back. And then also you you got your job done uh, at 2 p.m. And you didn't actually have to stay there till five, just staring at the screen, pretending, pretending like you were doing something, you know? <laughs> That's the thing, yeah. And so now you've got this huge chunk of, 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 of your week back, right? Because maybe that five or six days out of the week. And uh, yeah. I really, I hope that this... Um, I hope that this change is permanent and that it kind of really highlights. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna create some uh, some kind of weirdness with you know. Well, now these tech companies have these giant office spaces that they're not going to need to use as much. But hey, maybe you downsize. Maybe we don't need these massive, you know, uh, you know uh, rooms. Yeah, that, that, that's what I said as well. It's like we are having a big problem here in Berlin as well. But it's like uh, all those people have to move out of the city because yeah. the, the center is all full with offices and huge office spaces, and they pay horrendous rent. You know. And now there's often these offices are, are, are almost empty, you know, or only half the people are there. Yeah. So I, I already said, maybe it will help, you know, like people, off, uh, companies will find out, hey, we don't need that. People work from at home. We only have our weekly or biweekly meetings mm -hmm. at some sp office space somewhere. And we don't need that space. And maybe that those spaces go back to, to, to areas for, for people to live in. So the, the rents will may, maybe yeah. go down or Hopefully. something. It's like a, it's it's some some hope that I have, you know. I mean, yeah. some some things of, of, of course are, yeah. How do you say that? Like uh, in historical, no, uh, they they like uh, the, probably not going to happen. But yeah. uh, in a in a in a in a perfect world, maybe it could happen. And sure. I, I I don't I still want to believe in that, you know, that there is there is room for change and and then also with yeah within our music industry, without everything in, in everything, it's like. If it's a Black Lives Matter uh, 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 movement that is happening now, which is not even in the States, is no, not just in the States. It's also a big thing in Europe that, that mm. there has there's things to be done and to be changed, you yeah. know, or whether if it's women uh, to be like really equal, you know, because they're still not really equal you know, sure. at, at, at jobs or at payments or whatever. Yeah. So um, I think it's a time, and of course the whole economic or like. Uh, uh, yeah, climate, climate mm -hmm. thing that uh, 
your president is pretty good at denying <laughs> that it's happening. But uh, I think, I mean, we saw that today we had to laugh because he was like, for the last couple of months, he was saying like, oh, we don't need to, to cover your mouth. And he, today I think he suggested you should cover your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bad thing. It's like, it was like, we told you about two months ago from Europe that it might make sense. You know? Sure, yeah. Well, even even the World Health Organization went back and forth. You know, they flip-flopped, you know. Uh, don't wear masks because we, we need more of them for the hospitals. And now everyone needs to wear a mask, you know. Exactly. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, I mean, it's, yeah, it was a situation nobody had to be able, or like nobody was prepared for. I mean, that's sure. actually a good thing in a way because otherwise you would say, okay, it's organized by somebody. Hmm. But... Uh, I think it's yeah something we have to we have to go through in a couple of years. We might say, "Oh fuck, we were we were so stupid to, <laughs> as the way we reacted," yeah. or we might might say, "Okay, it was just perfect how we how we reacted," mm-hmm. or maybe we should have done more. I don't know. We will right. see in a couple of years, not now. I think, really- especially not us. Not us who are like uh, experts in, in <laughs> pandemics or anything like that. Sure, yeah, yeah. You really, I mean, hind- hindsight is twenty twenty, right? So, um, or you know, you, you'll never really know until till we're we're out of it. Um, you made a good point, though. You know, as far as like the the cities, kind of, you know, because that's been a big point of contention here in San Francisco is so many of the. Uh, I mean, rent is just it's the most expensive place in the world to live, or or one yeah. of them, right? Um, and you know, there's this big problem with you have baristas and people that work at Starbucks and at restaurants and stuff, and they have to live outside of the city, sometimes yeah. very far outside of the city, and then drive in. And, you know, in a perfect world, like the people that, that need to be there physically would, would be the ones that could live in the Close. city. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, but, but it's this, it's so ironic because all of the, you know, the tech companies, um, uh, the, the people that work at the tech companies want to move and live in the city so that they can be close to the art and the music. But but by doing that, they're driving out the very people that are the musicians they're moving and the artists. Away. The arty people are moving yeah. away because they can't afford it. Yeah. And, and then and then the city is going to be nothing but a, a, a bland, sterile, you know, corporate. Uh, desert essentially of you know void of yeah. any any music or art and then the whole thing will, and then the tech people will move away and then the artists move back in and the whole thing will just repeat so I start think, again if, if it starts again that's that, that's the again. thing like, right I, in the early early 2000s i lived in london for a couple of years where i did uh, so my my sound engineering uh, degree and, and stuff mm-hmm. and i was working for a lot of bands and touring and london at that time was already going like lower you know with music and 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 and, and like the the clubs and, and 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 live music venues and everything because it was all that just like financial it was the financial district of europe basically mm-hmm. and uh, so it's also tech companies financial companies and and nowadays i've been there like a couple of months ago uh, for for london music week and i went to my old neighborhood where i lived and uh, and it was like just like i went out there it's like am i in my manhattan or something that was just like <laughs> Like, uh, that was like, it looked shit when I was here, and I loved yeah. that, you know, and it was like live music when he was there and there and there, and now it's just like fancy bars, you know, and, and restaurants where you can't afford to eat, oh, and, and, and so all the people are gone, I don't, most of the people I went to university there and, and I worked with, they all moved out of the city because they couldn't afford it. Right. So all those people are gone, a lot of them are in Berlin now, but yeah. yeah. I, I got. Uh, we were doing a stream the other the uh, last weekend, and uh, I drove. I, I kind of didn't really look at the the prices, but I ordered three sandwiches, and I went to pick them up, and it was sixty five dollars for three sandwiches. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they were delicious sandwiches, but yeah. still, you know, sixteen, Easy seventeen, <laughs> eighteen dollars a sandwich is just is just insane. I don't care where you live. That's a, it's it's, it's way like too much money. In Switzerland, Swiss, Switzerland is that country in Europe. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, Switzerland, but they okay. got all the money. <laughs> they right, got yeah, right, yeah. the gold stored there, you know, from all the world. Sure. Now sure. they they're the most, I think, pretty much the most expensive uh, yeah. country in Europe. But uh, yeah, here in Berlin, it's okay. But uh, mm. I've been here. I live here. I live here now for two years. I moved here two years ago from Vienna, and uh, it was. When I started playing gigs here in 2014, 2015, it was still a lot cheaper, a lot different, but it became such a big hype, you know, in the past yeah. couple of 10, 10, 15 years. And, 
I mean, it's it's a lot of artists here, a lot of DJs, a lot of producers, lots of clubs already, of, of mm. course, and, and, and it's good fun to live in that city, and it's, it's always pumping and creative, but uh, of course here it will change, or it, it is changing as well, the whole thing, so maybe sure. of, because of all that COVID thing, maybe mm. it will regulate it a bit and hold it back a bit, the whole uh, uh, development which is happening right now. Totally. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to ask you. Maybe you can um, expand a little bit more about like what what it's like to what, what the music scene is like in Berlin and what it's like to live there, um, because it's kind of legendary, you know, in a lot of ways. And you always hear about the the underground Berlin t- you know, techno warehouse parties and that sort of thing. And um, obviously, you know, you, right now nothing's going on. But um, it, you know, what w- what is it like there, um, kind of pre quarantine and maybe post quarantine? Like, what's the, the music scene like there? Uh, well, I mean, Berlin is, is, for me, it was a reason to move here was because it was similar to London when I lived there, because it's very arty, it's, it's artists, like not only music, there's painters, there is, there's uh, writers, there is a lot of fashion here and everything. So it's, it's, it's a cool city to be and you can, and you, you can be whatever you want, you know, you don't have to hide it. If you want to walk out on the street half naked, nobody will look at you. It's like going like, what the fuck is wrong with you or something. <laughs> Sounds like, like San Francisco. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I heard a lot of times. People mm-hmm. have been telling me about it. Uh, and that, that's what I really like about here. It's like you can just be yourself and, and, and uh, it always used to be like that, even before the war, even even before the, 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 the Nazis des- destroyed everything basically in Europe. Right. But uh, also after, after the... the, the after the city was divided, you know, after the war, and, and, and it, it, it was always a special location because it was a divided city uh, mm. in, in, in for like thirty years, something like that, for about thirty years. Oh, because uh, of the wall. Because yeah, after, because of the wall, exactly. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was half half of the city was Russian, and the other was like American, French, and and the British who were there, and that was like West Berlin, and the other part was East Berlin. And uh, it was always a city where you don't, for example, if you moved here as a young uh, young man, normally in, in Germany or Austria, you have to go to uh, the army when you like when you're 18 after school, you have to do like six or eight months at the army, mm-hmm. like a basic course. And there's a lot of people who didn't want to do that, especially people who were like peacefully minded, you know, and, 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 and they moved to Berlin because in Berlin you didn't have that. So right. you had already a lot of open-minded, liberal thinking people who moved to Berlin yeah. already in those years. And they stayed, of course. And uh, after the wall came down, uh, there was like so much empty space here and people just opened clubs and, and pretty pretty much everything was possible. You know, there were art galleries there, here and there. And you still have some of those original places there. Mm. A lot of them are gone already because there's been like tech companies and, mm. and, and investment companies is buying up uh, uh, those those places but you have you still have those those warehouse i mean of course you have a, a massive amount of clubs there's like 400 400 clubs in that city uh most of them are open 24 hours uh, on the weekends you know it's like right. places like Berkheim or sisyphus they open up friday night and they sh- they close on monday night tuesday morning and they, they don't close in between so holy cow i mean as, as 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 someone that runs a nightclub that just sounds insane to me <laughs> it's it's i mean uh, they, it's like places like the, the, some friends i know who work at those uh, places they they have hundreds of people working there because yeah. you have to cover all the shifts uh you have like three four five different floors I mean, Sisyphus has a lineup on, on weekends like with 100, 120 DJs Whoa, on a weekend. That's no like a, kidding. You know? When you play from Friday, or like they have it when there's like, for example, a public holiday or something. So they have sometimes from Wednesday to Monday, they're open without a break. So you have like five days, four floors and, and, and DJs every couple of hours. So there's <laughs> like, it's easily sometimes 100 DJs there. Oh and you, you have to do the booking for them. You need yeah. uh, technical guys. You need people for the cleaning. You need uh, people to fill up the bars and bar stuff, of course, and security and all that. So it's huge companies, and um, and uh, they're doing a great job, all of them. And it's it's great fun to go into uh, to every 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 one of those clubs every now and then, or play there, of course. Um, it's also great in Berlin. You're not allowed to take photos in the club, you know. And, uh, yeah. 
there's no police in there. There's, I've never seen a policeman in a club here in Berlin. You know, so it's um, yeah, it's pretty a, a private space. It's a safe space for people. Um, also, when you it's like, I remember that from Austria. It's like when there's all those people taking photos all the time. You know, if you're I don't know in an important position in a bank or something. You can't go to the club and get wasted because you might add up, uh, 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 end up on Facebook, you know, with uh. a picture like, you know, <laughs> it will never go away, you know. Yes. So you can do that and you can party and you, can, you find 30, 40, 50 year olds in the clubs or even older ones. There's some legends, you know, who go out every now and then and they party even in their 60s and they rave, you know, and they, yeah. they dance. And, people, and they are treated like, they, they are 20 or 30, you know, it's, sure. it's, it doesn't matter their age. And yeah, of course, uh, because of all of them being also so big, uh, now the whole COVID situation is, of course, a problem because mm. a lot of people lost jobs and, 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 and it's difficult for them to, to stand their ground, you know, against some investors who want to buy places because they still, some of them are still located in the center of the cities. Right. So, uh, well, we'll see where it's happening. I mean, we'll see how long it's going to take. Uh, I don't see a lot happening before before there is a vaccination. Yeah. Um, I mean, most people say they think it's going to be like summer twenty one that it's actually going to be picking up again. I don't know what your your uh, ideas are, but I think I've, I've heard. The same. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard the same. You know, uh, summer of twenty twenty one, even twenty twenty two. You know, um, I heard that as well. which yeah. I mean, that's going to be a long time on unemployment for a lot of us. <laughs> you know, um, but uh, it's you know you you had said that you know when the wall came down, it made room for a lot of um, a lot more opportunity for like you said nightclubs and art galleries and stuff like that, more stuff for the arts. And, you know, what we were talking about earlier with, with people uh, suddenly being able to work at home, um, you know, for these tech companies, I'm thinking maybe, maybe we can, you know, uh, there'll be some of the same thing here where uh, yeah. they're, they're, you know, uh, rents come down and people are able to uh, do more with the city and, 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 you know, be um, a bit of a, you know, a, a refreshing of things uh, because, you know, things just get, they get, they get stagnant and they get, uh, you know, overused. And, and uh, I think everybody would like to, maybe, maybe not our, our neighbors, but everyone like would like to have more, more live music um, and that sort of thing. That's the thing. Yeah. I, th I think that's, that's, that's the thing. I mean, a lot of people are, are forgetting about the, how big this scene is. I mean, it was like in, in Germany, I don't have the exact figures now, but I had, I was in a discussion the other day because they, they were saving like the German uh, state was like saving Lufthansa as an, as an air, air uh, company. Um, and the whole um, entertainment sector in Germany is making more money than Lufthansa and has more people employed than Lufthansa. But there is not a lot of money put into those clubs suffering right now. You know, we've got to keep the, 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 the airline going, you know, and uh, which is actually killing the planet you know, on the <laughs> yeah. other hand. But uh, I think that shows as well where they where they where, where they point to you know it's like where they where they wanna wanna that that the the how you said the rating for for entertainment and clubs is not that important for those kind of people who are sitting there which is a shame but there's a lot of people having like good. Um, uh, they, they, they're coming together as groups like with here with Anja Schneider and, and, and some important DJs and they formed big groups and organizations to, to, to make themselves heard and make a good voice for, for themselves and for all of us and all the clubs to be recognized, you know, as a, mm. as a, as a big point. And, and, and it's part of, I mean, in Berlin, it's part of the city. I mean, most tourists come to Berlin because they want to party. Right. And that's... Uh, a lot of other cities. If you go to Vienna, you go there to see the opera house or to go to 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 to, to like some some theater. But here you want to see uh, you want to see clubs. You want to go to Berkheim. And uh, I've known some people who came here like five or six times, and they never got into Berkheim, but they're still coming back because they want to get into Berkheim. You know? so, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a little bit of a myth and everything, and they, sure. they just yeah, that's 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 typically Berlin. Yeah. And about those warehouse parties that you were mentioning, I mean they. 
they are always happening. I mean, they are also happening now already again. And it's like yeah. real, and they actually the funny part is we said that at the beginning. I may be more warehouse parties are coming back on more of those illegal raves. Right. And they are. I mean, they not they 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 are so they're really super secret. I mean, mm. uh, you don't really hear. It. It's like most of the DJs, you you get like a, a, a notification on your phone with the code and that's it like a half an hour before you set so you don't even go there you know or tell fans right. to go there yeah. wow so it's really cool there is some yeah. parties going on and and, and it's slowly steadily getting back the bars are already open uh, mm-hmm. they, they're allowed to stay open all night but with the clubs it's the same as as, as everywhere it's like mm-hmm. i i personally think i mean as much as i wish that it would start uh, pretty soon again but and the numbers in Berlin also are really, really low. I mean, that's actually a good point. But the problem is, once you're opening the clubs, there's thousands of tourists coming in, and then you you don't have you have the real the, the problem again that yeah you can't control it then anymore. Right. And uh, you won't help anybody if you open up the clubs for two weeks and then you have to shut it down again. Everything yeah. like that. would probably kill even more. Right. I was reading an article. Um, I think uh, ironically, uh, there was a, a group in. Uh, a group of uh, scientists or bio scientists or something like that uh, in in Germany that were are are doing a test where they're putting on a like four thousand person uh, like you know festival or or concert or whatever. Um, they're going to test everybody to make sure that they they don't have coronavirus, of course, before you know forty eight hours before. But then they're going to have the 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 concert. And everyone's got like uh, the hand sanitizer that um, mm-hmm. is is uh, neon and so or UV reflective or whatever, so or reactive, so that whatever they touch, they can trace it, and so they can get a better idea of how well, something snap. like the var the virus will will transfer from person to person, which I thought was was fascinating. And I mean, you know, you want to talk about getting um, getting the music industry back open. That's that's the first steps to doing that, right? Figuring out how to keep people safer. Definitely, I think so. And I mean, I, I, I heard about that test as well. It's like outside of Berlin in, in, in Brandenburg, which is like the uh, community around Berlin. Um, and um, I think the whole industry is like really doing a lot and trying hard to, to find solutions and to, to get concepts where it is possible to party together. Yeah. But as we all know, I mean, once you're, you're partying, you're partying, you know, and then you, you lose, you, you want to hug people or you yeah, want right. to say hi, you know, and it, it will happen. I mean, yeah. On the other hand, I mean, we said we were probably all had it already. We don't know. It's like it's, we're immune. We're immune because of all that clubbing here. No? Right. But, uh, you never. Yeah. I yeah. think it's 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 really hard to say. I mean, on the other hand, if the vaccination is there, who's going to go and and get it? You know. I mean, from the young people, I don't know. I mean, it's mm. basically to save the or to, to yeah to save the old old ones and the ones who have like their. They're uh, uh, who are already ill or have that have yeah. problems compromised immune uh, system risk group from compromised. Yes. Um, so that's what we do in it, you know. So uh, if they are safe, then things can go back to normal, hopefully. But yeah, yeah. In I the will... meantime, it's, it's about creating things like sequence and getting <laughs> getting musicians paid or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, I will say I uh, I do feel like, you know, um, many places could have handled this better, but it is good to see that, like, as an entire planet, we've kind of had to come together and just act together, right? Like, everybody quarantine, yeah. everybody test, everybody, uh, you know, count your, your numbers of sick and your deaths. And um, so that, that there's, there's kind of this strange... Uh, unification there in the you know quarantine and the and the pandemic, um, and it, you know I would imagine that this the quarantine has been a bit of a um, a silver lining for for you you guys there at uh, Sequence because now everyone's doing these streams and just like you know we did with our 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 stream um, are you able to are you able to uh, have you been getting more uh, be able, been able to work with more people now that there's more DJ streaming going on. Definitely. I mean, for us, to be honest, it was some at the first point when it all started, we were like down, you know, we were still in, in investment phases and, 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 and trying to grow and because we bootstrapped everything so far, you know, it's all been worked. It, 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 we're working at 
at n- weekends and at nights, you know. So uh, we worked all for the life thing and getting better and better, and then the whole thing broke down. Broke down. So we were like, "Fuck, you know, that's that's it then now." You know, it's like yeah. two years, three years, nothing to do now. You know, from now on. And then once the stream started, we sat together. It's like we got to find a way of, of getting there. And then the, the thing with the streaming started, and we started to to change our direction. And actually, we, we, we gained more attention because everybody was sitting at home. That was actually a plus point for us because all the DJs and all the all the tech guys that everybody was sitting at home watching streams or Netflix or whatever. So we got everybody's attention then, and then uh, we had, we started uh, like we're working together with some partners like Beatport, for example. We do their streams as well with the live set listing on their on their Beatport Beatport page. That's actually also how I got in touch with Ryan because uh, we had a track. I think I don't know who it was. Somebody played a track of his, yeah. and I tagged him in a post, and he wrote to me, "Hey, how awesome is that? And how cool is that?" And we got. A stream next week uh, with with uh, Halcyon and, and and could we do something? Could we partner up? So like of course, you know, let's do this. <laughs> uh, so that's actually how the connection happened. Yeah. And um, and and for us then it, with that we, we grew steadily. You know, and if you once you're on the on the Beatport start page, for example, with your logo and, and the, the set list, more and more people got uh, got the attention from us. And uh, there's some clubs around the world uh, where we're working together now with their live streams, like the Watergate here in Berlin or La Feria in, in Chile, or like with your live stream from Austria. Sure. Um, and it's it's uh, it's it's really interesting to see what's happening there. Also, the dynamic which which is happening at the streams. Uh, also, going back to that uh, to make it more interesting, I was like, we had a really interesting stream with the uh, Shangri La group. They they part of Glastonbury Festival, and they had a, a really nice idea with a, with a VR stream kind of. They had like a four four stage festival mm. over on on, the, on on Saturday and no, Friday and Saturday night. Um, and you could choose if you have VR, you could choose on which floor you walk in. You walk in like with an avatar, you know, so you're dressed like regular, but then, then you can buy for micropayments. You can buy, I don't know, whatever, chicken costume, or you can buy a, <laughs> a, a, a cheese string, you know, you so, walk around and you cheese string or stuff like this. That's what I want. And, <laughs> and exactly, it's like, it was so funny to watch because I don't have any VR here, but we yeah. were watching it, you know, you could see from the outside. And then all of a sudden you could see a group of naked guys, you know, all, all with cheese strings in the corner, you know, um, sitting together. So like, that would be the dark room of bear kind. Yeah. You know? <laughs> all the people, you know? But uh, so it's actually quite interesting, and a lot of people say there was a lot of like uh, 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 like questioning afterwards of, of, of how they felt and how the, the thing felt, and a lot of people said, yeah, well, it was of course it's not the same as being in the club. I mean, we all know that, but it's something different, and it's quite interesting. And I think we should give like things like that a chance, you know. I mean, I've seen a lot of like postings from people that I'm, I'm that I know as well saying, "Ah, that's all bullshit. That's not uh, that's not uh, techno, and that's not clubbing, and that's we need parties, we need clubs." It's like I know that. Well, we know that we need that, but we can't have it at the moment. So right. we've got to find different ways. I mean, before the '80s, nobody thought that we will have techno clubs, you know, like we have in Berlin. And Everybody go like that. That is evil, you know. So yes, right. <laughs> why, why, why doing the same thing again over and over? You know, instead of being open to something new. Yeah. And I think I think it's a it's it's still at the it, at the start, the very start. But um, again, I think we have to learn a lot, like what's happening in the whole computer gaming community. I mean, mm-hmm. they're doing it pretty well, and. Who says that not in a, in a year from now, you know, you have a clubbing, for example, at, at the Halcyon, you have like a VR, and I'm sitting here in Berlin, I was like, what am I going to do tonight? I'm, mm. I'm going to go to the club here because it's raining or whatever. It's like, let's go and see who's playing there, you know, and, and yeah. click in. Some micropayment, you put on your, 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 your uh, VR, and you're in the club in San yeah. Francisco, maybe you hook up with some friends who are with you, whatever. And you have an experience at least for an hour or two or something, you know. Right. But you have like some kind of experience happening there, an interaction happening there. Um, why not? I mean, it's a it's a VR world, and for for lots of us, it's it's still not imaginable. But uh, I think, I mean, if you look at the kids, what's happened for them, it's already 
completely normal and totally. and, and uh, we'll see. I mean, I, it, it was really interesting when I was in London for the for the London Music Week. Uh, that was the first time in a couple of years that that he was so positive about things happening. Actually, now that was a short before COVID, so I was like, wouldn't have been probably that positive when it was when it was after that. But uh, the years before, it was always people just moaning and, 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 and arguing about it's all so shit. And then and, and earlier, it, it was all better and, and, and no Spotify and uh, whatever, you know. But nowadays, you have so many people who are really motivated to do something new and to create new chances of, of, mm -hmm. of creating value for music again. Because yeah. I think that that was lost for a lot of times, or for a long time now. But like we said with, uh, with with sequence, for example, that we we want to get the artists that are being played paid, you know. And, yeah. and, and, and an ideal picture would be that if you play a track from me now in, in a club, that I get a notification. You just played my track, um, and you just earn three dollars fifty five cents transferred to your PayPal or blockchain, whatever you want. What, what's how, happening how, exci how exciting would it be to have that on your phone and you just get these yeah. random notifications yeah. someone in in uh cancun is playing your track boom three bucks like i would be so so motivated to because there's i can't think of any other industry that uh, that is so messed up as far as like people being paid for their time right i mean what what other industry can you think of where people spend countless hours, months, years to craft something yeah. to only to get literally nothing. Right. And so yeah. it's just, it's so exciting. And, you know, I think that this, I think this whole coronavirus thing, everything we've been talking about is really bringing a lot of it's, it's birthed, you know, uh, at, at the very least another one third of, of, the, of, of the scene of our world that we didn't really have before. I mean, sure. People were, were streaming and, you know, I used to get on Twitch and listen to like some drum and bass streamers and stuff, but mm -hmm. it was always, you know, five, 10 people in there or whatever. And this whole thing now is now, now this is a thing. Now everybody, every yeah. DJ in San Francisco has their streaming set up. And so, exactly, you know, yeah. and, and so, and then this is also, you know, if I had, um, I always tell the story cause I, I think it's funny, but you know, uh, Gina is the owner uh, of, of Halcyon and, uh, if I were to have come to her before coronavirus and said, hey, Gina, let's get a Twitch channel going. She would have been like, what? You know, what are you talking what about? <laughs> yeah. But but now it's blatantly obvious. I mean, Twitch yeah. Twitch and YouTube and, and, and uh, not so much Facebook, but that have really been our entire existence over the last couple of months. Yeah. And so um, I, I, I'm really excited about, you know, once we start to open back up, we're going to incorporate, uh, at least I hope we're going to, I think we're going to incorporate our streaming setup, which is now on the dance floor, you know, uh, on a table on the dance floor, the cameras and all that. Yeah. We're going to incorporate that into the club. And so we're going to, you know, have a, have a camera way back. Oh, I can show you on my, oh, you can't see it, but the listeners can see it uh, right way back there. We'll have a camera facing the DJ booth. We'll have one okay, you yeah. know, off to the side, like, like, like we're doing now currently. Currently, but it'll be permanently installed um, and it'll all be up in my uh, lighting booth which is right up there <laughs> um, and so I'll be able to run the lights and the sound and also do a stream which I think is gonna be a little bit hairy on my part but I think I could do it um, and uh, and and you know I think we'll, what we're gonna do is uh, maybe do some some free some free streams and that sort of thing maybe maybe the openers like the first half of the night is free and then and then once the headliner comes on you've got to pay you know five or ten dollars but then you can just yeah. like you said i mean you know vr would be incredible vr would be out of this world uh exciting but um i think you know a little bit more realistically uh, you in, in Berlin or anywhere around the world, you could tune in to watch Carl Cox play if you were bored, That's just amazing. like you said, if it was raining or whatever. And so I'm I'm just I'm just really excited about it. And, and now talking to you about this, uh, I, I didn't even really put two and two together about how much more potential money um, we could make as musicians and entertainers and that sort of thing. Um, and and it's, it's, it seems like a very realistic thing. Definitely. I mean, I, I think that that Imagining that would be a nice, nice target for the future. It's like, uh, and I think a lot of cl clubs will, like you said, now uh, will keep on working with that, even when they back on live, because they have the, the things installed, and why not streaming uh, things live? Yeah. And uh, with all those technologies, like we with Sequence, for example, with the live track IDs and stuff, 
uh, it will add value for the people to, to watch it as well because they got that thing and for the artists as well because if I know the track that I, li I like that track that is playing I will save it like if it's up here you know with a widget I will say I will I will click on it and go like okay save to my Spotify playlist or save mm. to wherever you know or buy on Beatport straight yeah. away because that's what we know people do out of emotion because they love a song right. or they love something they will buy it at the moment. Yeah, you know, I'm, 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 not to cut you off, but imagine if, if someone could be watching the stream, wherever they are, uh, uh, the, the, the DJ play, because I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there you know, listening to the music at Halcyon as the DJs are playing it, and I'm Shazamming them because, oh, I want to know what this is. <laughs> and then you, of course, go to Beatport, and you have to find it, and you have yeah. to buy it. But if you could just, uh, if you could just click on the, the sequence the button th thing in the corner and it will open up the song you just hit buy now like boom there's a yeah. whole nother uh, source of immediacy as far as getting the song that you want and you know so many of them i, I probably i'd say probably 80 percent of the songs that i shazam i never end up actually getting because i can't find it or i shazammed it wrong or something like that yeah, you, you forget know? it you forget about it as forget. well or the day yeah. after you know it, it, it doesn't sound that great as it sounded in the club you know because you're listening to it at home or whatever you know so right that there's tons of reasons why you don't buy it, but if, sure. you, if you can do it on the spot, you will do it, you know? Totally. And uh, that's another point on sequence where we go, like, uh, if we're getting a, a software, there, there's going to be in, in the features, like, there's going to be, like, for example, a fan app as well, mm -hmm. where you have, like, the crowd included with the, with, with the phone, you know? So you'll have, first of all, they'll have the track list live, yeah. and they, they, but they will, you will also be able, as an artist or as a club, be able to, to communicate with the people who were there at the night before because you know who was there because they got their, 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 their app running if they want it, of course. I mean, sure. if they don't want it, fair sure. enough, uh, but, uh, privacy for everybody. But uh, <laughs> if, you, if you can stay in touch with, the, with your crowd because, you know, it, it's been such a great night and please send me your phone, the pictures you've taken last night, you know, oh, yeah. please, whatever, you know, so you, you'll get a whole, a whole other uh, communication going. Also sure. for clubs. Yeah, you know, with uh, with with uh, the guests as well, and um, so that's that's all future plans of, of of course. But we start just at the beginning, but sure. uh, yeah, slowly, steadily getting there. You're seeing <laughs> you're seeing little bits of it, right? Where where um, we'll, you know we'll have a, a DJ play at Halcyon, and then people in the crowd will be doing like video of it, and they'll put it on Instagram, and they'll tag the the DJ, exactly. and then the DJ will in turn repost that on that's their the channel. Thing, yeah. And so you're getting this kind of crowdsourced coverage of the event, which is super cool. Yeah. That's that's exactly what's 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 gonna or what we would like to happen, you know, yeah. because it's the whole makes the interaction better. And yeah. also we can do we could do uh, real time charts, you know, we could yeah. say club specific, we could make the top ten of Halcyon from last month or whatever, because we know what was played there. Mm. And uh, we know what's played, what's the most favorite tracks in San Francisco, in house, in techno, in wow. whatever, you know? So you can create like real coverage because like now what's happening on Beatport, like 80% of those charts are fake. Yeah, <laughs> right. Friends are buying your music to be in the oh, top God. 50, you know? And then and that's, that's the, it's not a real picture of what's happening. Can we, so. can we, can we expand on that? Do, do why? Because I've heard that before, but why, why do they end up uh, fake? The, the top on the well, beatport. I mean, it's, it's been. It's. Uh, I mean, not 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 in top. I mean, to get it to like top ten, top twenty, it's you, you need a lot of friends. Oh. But uh, still, you know, to at least get in the top hundred, because it's just it's promotion. I mean, that yeah. that was a usual practice already in the eighties. I mean, people went to buy. I mean, there, there's been some some scandals. You know, when they found out that I don't know bands bought like. A, 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 couple of thousand copies of their own albums oh, to yeah. get in the in the billboard charts or something like this, sure. you know. Sure. It's been stories and of course there's it, that's always been happening. I mean, yeah. They, well you could do it you can do it with books too. So uh, best sellers. Yeah, that someone sold. will buy, you know, two hundred thousand copies of their own book, put them in a warehouse exactly. for a while and then resell them. But you've already yeah. gotten you've already gotten the you know, number one bestseller on, you know, uh, Amazon or New York Times or whatever I don't know whatever publisher it is but uh, you've got you've gotten that title and then you can just kind of casually sell the books back there needs to be something there needs to be something uh, you know uh, stopping that because that's just that just seems crazy I mean that's just more more into the you know you got to have money to make money type thing right but it really that's should it should be a meritocracy it should be like 
no, this actually is the best song or this is the best book at the time. Um, and let's, you know, and, and also too, you, you know, there's the, the farms, the, um, the listen farms in, you know, uh, uh, parts of, of Southeast okay. Asia and stuff where you've seen videos where they have f f just walls of phones and iPads phones. automated doing this like listen like thing. And like, Oh, it's just, I mean, I, I get it. People want to be, people want to be popular, but uh, I, you yeah. know, it's it's always like you said before. It's always if you got money, you make money. You know, it's 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 a there was a, a there's a video on YouTube about a guy who showed what's happening on on, on Spotify and uh, how you become a star on, on Spotify basically. And uh, he he was a hacker. I think it was actually a German guy, and um, he he uh, he showed how he that he told the guy he was a commentator from a TV show to they they were there to create a hip hop track and actually he had to sing you know he was a crappy singer but it was like yeah with the, with the techniques nowadays and auto tune and melodyne and whatever it sounded pretty decent it was a pretty normal average rap song you know and uh, he pushed it like in the top 10 on, on, on Spotify you know and then all on YouTube with premieres and it was all hacked you know and they invested like 50,000 50, uh, euros, sure. and in the end, they got out uh, seventy thousand. You know, it's it's a money washing. I don't know. You sure. call it in like laundering. Well. Kind of. So it's like yeah. money that is not not official first, and then uh, <laughs> you get it from uh, Spotify. You get even more out of it. You know, and sure. you have a star is born. You know, so yeah. uh, things like that happen, uh, and and it's part of this this world. I mean, yeah. uh, and that happens in any any genre. I mean, it, it, Right. Whereas, whereas money to be made, there's always going to be people who's going to invest in in some ways, and uh, they're going to make it big. I mean, it's loads of artists we all know that are just made artists, you know. But yeah, um, yeah I mean, uh, fair enough. I mean, they're all doing their job and all they're doing their business, and, and it's good for them to be there. And people, the crowd wants them. That's another thing as well. The audience wants mm. them. Uh, but I think it should be fair as well to, to those artists who really create a lot of music and uh, they're getting left out. And um, I think there's a lot of positive positive things to be to be happening, hopefully. And um, so so people can make more music and then not not suffer, you know, and, mm -hmm. and have to play like ten gigs a, a month or something to to right. survive, you know. Right. And, uh, I mean, if you're 20, 22, or 25 years old, that doesn't matter. I mean, when we right. were at that age, it's like, it didn't matter. We could party all weekend, you know. Yeah. But uh, now, it's like once, you, once you're in your 30s or something, you go in like, fuck, I want a weekend off, you know. <laughs> I don't want to go to play at this or that club right. because, yeah, but I have to do it. I have to pay my rent. Yeah. So I, I, I literally, literally on the last podcast, or second to last podcast, I had... Um, uh, Night Lab, my buddy uh, Marcus Kennedy, mm -hmm. and he uh, he was just saying the same thing. He's like, man, I'm in my in my 40s, and I I just you know I it, it's it's too it's too much to going to the you know I got maybe a couple like one or two you know uh, weekends in me that I can go out and play shows, and these younger cats that are still in college or whatever, and they're you know they can do it uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday every weekend or whatever. Um, but it's uh it's a it's a lot of grind. It would be really really nice. Um, if, yeah, if you can make music, make money off of it, play the shows that, that you want. I think we've, we've, uh, we've, we've nailed down our, our ideal utopia <laughs> in the music yeah, world. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, um, let me ask you too, before we, uh, we're about an hour and, and uh, 15 in, um, but, uh, let me ask you about your, your own music. Um, because I know you had, you just had a release on, well, so you, uh, you are, uh, A&R at Ballroom Records and, um, uh, label manager there. Yeah, well, I've, I've actually run uh, Ballroom Records together with Kaiser Susai. He's, he's the oh. founder as well of the label, and I joined when I moved here to Berlin. Uh, he needed somebody to, 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 to help him, and then and, and I got more and more into it. I uh, had a radio show that I've been doing for a couple of years through like a podcast radio show, which runs on a couple of hundred stations worldwide, and I integrated that to the label. So in the end, we ended up like we were like co co owners of Ballroom Records. and. Nice created two sub labels to be a little bit more versatile. We got like mm -hmm. Ballroom Purple and Ballroom Black. So Black is for the more techno end and the uh, classic ballroom is more melodic, progressive stuff. And Purple is yeah, more the moody, like down tempo or more really chilled out stuff. Sure, and, sure. Uh, 
yeah, we were pretty tight on a release schedule. It was like the last couple of months, been like almost every week a release on one of those labels. So it was busy, but loads of great music came in. And, and on the other hand, people don't have any parties out there. So we said, uh, let's fire that music out. You know, people need music. <laughs> Nice and uh, yeah, so that's that's part of my thing as 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 running three labels beside the whole sequence thing, and uh, yeah, then I got my my own like artist thing, which is Albert mm -hmm. as a DJ where uh, and producer where I'm situated somewhere between techno and 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 I always like some dark melodic stuff in there. Um, it always changes a bit. I mean, I was sure. always in the beginning. I was more focused to stay like in one direction because mm -hmm. a lot of people tell you, yeah, you need to stick to your like roots or whatever, you know. And then people know what they're paying for, basically. Right. Uh, partly they're right, but on the other hand, I think as an artist, you should show what you're capable of. And if you want to do a melodic track or like a down tempo track, you should do it. And if mm -hmm. you want to do a drum and bass track, you should do it. I didn't do that yet, but maybe at some point. And yeah, it was like two years ago, is it happened that Richie Horton started to play a track of mine, a remix that I did for Christian Hornbostel a lot, and he wanted to include it into his uh, his new live setting he did like last year, and he did a remix of the remix, so I was able with that to release on his label on Plus 8. Wow. And of course, because of that, a lot of people came on to me, it's like, ah, I want to have a remix, like that style, so... And I, I, at that point, I just wanted to go back to, to the more melodic stuff. So in the end, I ended up like doing full on techno again. But it's good fun, and and, and yeah, it's all about the music. And, and, and yeah, that's always, that's, that's, a, that's amazing. I, I've I've uh, daydreamed about that before, taking a, a a song and then remixing it, and then someone else remixes the remix, but they take yeah. they take away the parts that were in the first song. And then so you have a remix ah. of that remix, and then it just keeps going like that. And you could literally keep keep doing that, and just you know create this chain of songs, and then maybe eventually connect them to the first one. And maybe you've gone through all the different scales of music and, <laughs> and create this. That's a funny part. That's a, that's a good, interesting point. <laughs> right? Yeah, you could create a DJ mix of all of them because they all kind of go end to end. That's definitely a good idea. We should work on that. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Send, send me over the, the remix files. Okay, all right, I will. <laughs> so, uh, so do you have any? Uh, do you have any projects then that uh, you're working on uh, releasing for your own stuff? Uh, I was I was about to do a couple of like I wanted to do two EPs this year to release because I I've been like a pretty tight schedule in the last two year last two or three years. Um, I wanted to get a bit uh, back to 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 less releases. Um, which actually happened because I have so much other work to do with the labels and sequence that I, I don't have that much time for music, but I'm preparing uh, like two EPs right now that I don't know yet where they're going. Maybe they go on our own labels or maybe I find, depends on which label I find. Uh, also doing a lot of remixes every now and then because uh, I always try not to do a lot of remixes, but then like friends or guys that I know send me some so, ah, would you do? Would you like to do a remix? And I was like, oh, come on, yes, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> so I end up doing like so many remixes all the time, which which, yeah. which keeps me away from doing EPs. Right. But it's pretty good. And uh, now started yesterday again a project that I picked up with two girls here from Berlin. They are called Mir's Mir. They're like pretty pretty uh, excited, exciting young artists, uh, young duo. And um, we're doing a project together, like in collaboration on, uh, on an EP. And uh, it's good working as well sometimes in the studio with other people uh, to have like a more open open look at, at different different styles of music. So it's quite interesting. We picked that up yesterday. So we'll That's see awesome. where it's going. Nice. I love that. Cool, man. Well, um, let's uh, let's let's call this one a wrap. I actually have to, like we were talking about before, I have to uh, to pick up my my car from the shop. Um, but uh, it's it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you about this because I I'm, I mean I'm I am reinvigorated and excited about uh, you know where the where the music industry uh, could possibly go. I hope it I hope it does go there. Um, and uh, you know thank you for for putting in the hard work to 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 make that happen. Um, and, and for joining me here on the podcast, I, I'd like to do another uh, episode. Maybe the next one, we'll just talk more about, you know, uh, music in general, your own stuff, um, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, you, you got anything you want to plug, um, on the, on the way out, uh, sequence website or your own, your own SoundCloud or anything like that? 
for sequence sequence website is sequence.com which is s w e q n c.com you'll find pretty much all the all the information we're doing a big rebrand right now about the whole whole program uh, like website and also the app i um, mean you can download the app as well on the app store or google play store um, for for ios and android um, yeah that's that's running as I said, it's going to have a, a, a whole rebranding thing now in the next couple of weeks, so it will look pretty brand new. Um, for my personal stuff, yeah, it's uh, you can find me on SoundCloud. I'm just checking, it's like uh, slash DJ Albert. Yep. Um, same as my my Facebook and everything. So uh, you'll find my my music and my mixes from from different clubs here in Berlin. Sweet. Uh, you should check out the, the ones from Sisyphus, for example. Those, those are always nice because you play like three to four hour sets there at oh. the club, and uh, which is which I love uh, to do like long sets because you can really put a lot of emotions in there and in, in, in a set. And uh, yeah, it's good fun. That's great. Yeah, I feel like the the hour set you're just getting started. You know, the, the three four hours is where you really get to stretch your legs out and really you exactly. Know, That's get, get some... You really can you can enjoy it. You know, you you. You have a break from the guy that or the girl that plays before you. You know, you break it down. Have a have uh, the guy uh, the the act before getting the applause. You know, yeah. and then you're starting fresh with a completely new set and right. new room, basically, yeah. <laughs> and building it up for four hours, yeah. which is absolutely great. I love it. Oh, that's amazing. Cool, man. Well, um, thank yeah. you again for for uh, for doing this with me. And um, again, me. all these all the all the links to. Um, uh, to your stuff will be in the the video description below. So if you're you're listening or watching, you can you can check it out. Definitely check uh, both of them out. I mean, I, I listened to some of your tunes and they were they were great. And uh, sequence, of course, is is uh, awesome. So uh, thank you all for joining us. I'm Scott Brios. This has been episode number sixty four of the Voice of Electronic Music with Albert Gruber. And uh, if you want to check out the previous episodes, you can just Google it. We're basically on every major streaming pl platform. So uh, we will see you guys on the next one. And uh, peace out.